It is National Asthma and Allergy Awareness Month, so today we're highlighting the efforts of one organization to help put an end to food allergies. Each one of these 17 kids around us represents one million people across the country suffering from food allergies, which can range from mild to critical. These 17 million Americans are potentially just one bite away from a life-threatening situation. <laughs> Lindsay Hall is a 12-year-old who loves gymnastics and who also suffers from life-threatening food allergies. I'm allergic to dairy, eggs, and nuts, which includes butter, pizza, cake, almonds, cashews, peanuts. Lindsay's not alone. An estimated 17 million Americans suffer from food allergies. If you're at a restaurant, they tell you there's nothing in it, but you're not sure. And even like at home, you have to check every ingredient and there can even be like a tree smell, and it's just really scary because I could put you in like an ambulance. Her mom Kim knows all too well the fear of keeping her daughter safe. I had to teach Lindsay that when she went into a room and she saw someone that might have Doritos and if they were to open that bag and the cheesy dust could come out that that was dangerous. It's really hard to know that just one bite of something that Lindsay could have could put her in a life-threatening situation. Approximately two kids in every classroom have food allergies. I just sometimes feel different than everyone else, and I always have to bring food everywhere, have to call ahead, and I wish I could just like not have to worry about any of that. 12-year-old Jake Auerman also understands the struggles of living with severe food allergies to peanuts, tree nuts, and sesame. I'll have times where I'll think, okay, I'm just gonna eat this, and then finally I remember, wait, I have to check it first. So I sort of fear that I'm just gonna be alone and just eat something I shouldn't have. And by the time I can like, get some help, it'll be a little too late. Every three minutes, a person visits the ER with an allergic reaction. The word allergy is not a strong enough word because I don't think people understand that it's a life-threatening situation for a lot of people and it's so prevalent. A desire to end food allergies inspired Kim Hall and Elise Bates to create the organization End Allergies Together to raise awareness and funds for research. It can be as small as the amount of a grain of sand equal to food. That's what a trace amount can be, even less than that. And so just a trace of that in food inadvertently can send someone into a life-threatening reaction. And so eating is something you have to do every day, multiple times a day and our kids are scared to eat, and they have to rely on the fact that whoever prepared their food didn't make a mistake. And so our mission is to get everybody involved to help fund a cure for food allergies. Which they're doing with their campaign called Do Your 17, honoring the millions of Americans who suffer from food allergies. A social media movement highlighting the number 17 and bringing the cause to new heights. I want a cure for food allergies so that my sister isn't scared anymore. Dr. Carrie Peterson, who's an internal medicine specialist, helping us understand more about food allergy. Uh, Dr. Peterson, why is it, do we have any idea why there's this surge in food allergies, why suddenly we're seeing this, as it's been growing, seems like year after year. Yeah, that's right. When I was a kid, I don't remember any children in my class having allergies, but nowadays we see five, six kids in one class having them. It's not very well understood. We know that they are inherited genetically. There are theories. One theory is that potentially the overuse of hand sanitizers and antibiotics mm -hmm. may play a role, but it's just really not clear. So what, what are the early signs that parents should look for in their children? So there's a whole spectrum of symptoms. Respiratory symptoms will include runny, uh, watery eyes and itchy eyes, runny nose, coughing and sneezing, almost like cold-like symptoms. Mm -hmm. You can also get hives, but it can also affect the GI tract. So you can have nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. And you can get symptoms anywhere from minutes to a few hours after the exposure. So you have to keep it in mind, even if they have these symptoms a few hours later. And depending on, on the severity of it, 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 could, it could be fatal. It could absolutely be life-threatening. You can have something called an anaphylactic reaction, mm -hmm. which is when it inf uh, affects the airway. So the airway becomes compromised you can get swelling of the lips and tongue. Your airway can swell up and that can cause hoarseness. You can hear a funny sound when your child breathes called, causing, uh, called strider. Mm -hmm. This can become life-threatening. Your blood pressure can drop. It could cause shock. And that is treated with an EpiPen, which is why many children with allergies will carry an EpiPen. What's your name, young guy? What's your name? Aaron. Aaron brought up this. Uh, what, what, how promising is this peanut patch we've been hearing about? Well, the, the idea now is that if you expose a child to small amounts early on that you can sort of 
almost create an immune reaction to the to the allergen and that over time you can reduce the the reaction that they have to the product unfortunately peanuts and shellfish tend to be the allergies that last what most commonly last lifelong whereas meat uh, milk, dairy, eggs, and soy, and wheat are other common allergens. Mm -hmm. Tend to out kids tend to outgrow them about 80% of the time. And I do want to make parents aware that, for example, if your child is allergic to milk, it doesn't necessarily mean that they only have to avoid milk. Milk is also found in butter and cheese, so you have to be very aware of the ingredients and other products. And also that they tend to be compartmentalized. If you're allergic to peanuts, it doesn't mean you're allergic to wheat. Right. And you don't have to go to a restaurant and avoid wheat. We've got more information on our website, today.com.